Let's revisit the Lakers again because it, it just seems like they are on a, a little bit of a treadmill after winning the in-season tournament with a, a couple of games in Vegas that made us all think, well, there it is. That's it. We could see that maybe uh, from April through June as opposed to just two games, maybe over two months. That's possible. Uh, but it just seemed to be on, on on a treadmill where they'll win a couple and then just go back to the same old, same old where we're wondering where where the – where the championship quality is, Brian, and what 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 is going on there, and how does that affect LeBron's um, future? Yeah, they're um, they're a little bit maddening, I can imagine, for their uh, for their executives because you know, the team that they put together at the end of last season, like they defended like crazy. They were the number one or two defensive team after the trade deadline last year. And some of the offense, some of the players they brought in also could do some things offensively. And, you know, they were like, man, like that's a team, like like a concept of having two future hall of famers, LeBron and AD and a defensive first team. Like I'm not saying they would ever move into like you know, leading contender to win the title, but like, that's something that you can do some damage with. And then you watched how they played in the in-season tournament. And it wasn't just the games in Vegas, Rich, they crushed in that tournament. LeBron turned it up. They had the, you know, cause we had to pay attention to scoring differential. Cause that was the tiebreaker. Yes. The Lakers were the scoring differential leader by like 50 points, not 50. They were the leader by 50 points. They dominated that whole event. And so if you're their front office, you're saying, this is our team. We defend, we get AD and LeBron playing well, but we are now 40 plus games into the season. And I think AD has missed four or five games. LeBron's missed maybe three. They haven't had injuries to their stars. Those guys have been there and they're not getting the, the wins. And, you know, in the last, um, you know, couple of weeks, They've actually even gotten some really good play from D'Angelo Russell, who's been a guy who's been a disappointment this year. They re-signed him instead of like letting him walk and maybe trying to go find another uh, guard. They re-signed him and he was in a terrible slump. He was out of the starting lineup. He's come back to the starting lineup over the last couple of weeks and been awesome, put up some huge performances and they've had a very favorable portion of schedule and they're still basically 500. So, you know, I think they're a little bit stuttered by the, you know, by the thing that they, that their team is operating in in significant way, like they wanted to, and it's not producing results when that team has produced results in the past. So I, there's not an easy answer here. And when you ask about LeBron, you know, like LeBron is 39 years old. He has an option in his contract and his son might be in the draft. Um, I think there's a good chance his son is going to come to the draft. Uh, he has said he wants to play with his son. These are all facts. Um, I, I, I really can't see um, LeBron not being in LA. That said, he has never been on a one-year contract with the Lakers. He has always extended. I think he's been there six years and he's extended his contract. He's signed three different contracts. He's extended repeatedly. He is clearly leaving that option there not because he necessarily wants to leave, but because I think he just wants to have flexibility, he wants to see what happens. And, you know, that's a reality that the Lakers have to grapple with. Um, they, you know, regardless of what LeBron's contract is, he's 39. You know, when he retires or moves on, whatever, he's not replaceable. Like, yeah, they're the <laughs> Lakers. People are going to want to play there. He's an unreplaceable resource. So, like, even if he was signed a contract for five years, they still would have the pressure of dealing with a 39-year-old who they need to try to take advantage of. Well, I, and and I, I guess there is, I mean, let's just go there. I mean, just the way that they handled Kobe's end of his career and and how that kind of, you know, cap strung them uh, on occasion, but they wanted to have Kobe there. And, you know, um, I'm wondering if they'll do the same thing with LeBron, although I don't know how much longer LeBron wants to play. Is it just one year with this kid? I mean, is there anything to inform all this? Because that not only informs yeah. what they do at the trade deadline, it's what they do in the draft. It's what they do for next year. And, and who knows, Brian? I mean, that's big. Yeah, there's a there's a ton of unanswerable questions there, you know. Um, yes. One, the Lakers don't even know if they're going to have their draft pick this year. Um, there's this weird um, thing that the Pelicans have. The Pelicans have the option, and I think the deadline is like June 1st or something like that. The Pelicans have the option of either taking the Lakers pick this year or next year. And obviously it's going to depend on where the Lakers pick ends up. 
Like, are they going to miss the playoffs and be a lottery team? Are they going to get lucky in the lottery? It's unprotected, by the way. Uh, even though if, if, it, if it gets unlucky, if the Lakers miss the playoffs and it gets lottery luck, the Pelicans can take it. Um, so I don't even know, like, forget about whether or not you think the Lakers should draft Bronny James or anybody should draft Bronny James. The Lakers don't even know as they operate today whether they're going to have a draft pick in this year's draft. So that's, that's one complication. Second complication is I do think that LeBron could play multiple more years in the league. Um, and also he's under contract for 50 million. He's the, his option for next year is 50 million, five, zero. I know the man is wealthy, but $50 million is not nothing. So, you know, maybe he wants to play with his son, but maybe his son gets drafted by a team that says, yeah, LeBron, you can come play here, but we've got 10 million. That's what we've got. Like they don't have, you know, salary cap space. Is he honestly going to leave that kind of money on the table to move? I can't see that, but you know, I don't know. Um, maybe Bronny James doesn't get drafted at all. Maybe, maybe the best thing for Bronny is to go to a team where he can develop, not a team with LeBron on it, where he would, you know, there would be a totally different set of circumstances. There, there's a ton of different things. All I can tell you is the Lakers are 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 coming in under expectations right now. LeBron is 39. LeBron has an option on his contract. The Lakers don't know whether they're going to have their draft pick. I don't know what's going to happen with Bronny James, whether he's in the draft or not. And if he is in the draft, I don't know where he's going to take him. I don't know how strong and important it is for him to play with LeBron Jr. in 24-25. These are all unanswered questions. And that was what makes this kind of a fascinating thing to watch. No doubt. So just to put a point on it, based on what you said, it's possible it could come down to LeBron staying with the Lakers comes down to the Lakers drafting Bronny because that's what's obviously – and it makes total sense that LeBron would want to do that before, you know, moving on to the next part of his life. Yeah, in a weird way, Rich, I, I know that this sounds counterintuitive. The better Bronny plays at USC, the harder it might be to play with him. And the reason is because if he, like, was had, like, a brilliant season this year and, like, he becomes – because, you know, Jonathan Gavoni, who's at ESPN, our, our guy who – who evaluates draft picks. Like he's awesome at his job and like, go look at his mock drafts. He like nails the mock drafts, maybe not a, a year out, but certainly in the, you know, and, and he was, he thought that Bronny before his terrible uh, event last summer, mm -hmm. he thought Bronny could be a lottery pick. Well, if Bronny's potentially a lottery pick, it's the Lakers might not have a shot at him. If Bronny looks like more of a project, and he slides into the second round, oh, it becomes much more feasible for the Lakers to, acquire him and frankly if he doesn't get drafted at all which i think he's going to get drafted but like if he doesn't get drafted at all lakers could just sign him so in a strange way obviously lebron wants Bronny to have a great season at usc but it if Bronny goes later in the draft it becomes easier for the lakers to acquire him and this becomes a cleaner process it's counterintuitive but it's one of the other facets that's just fascinating about the situation and yet they may not have a draft pick to use on him because of the Anthony Davis trade? Is that what that's from? The Pelicans? That's, that's what right. Wow. Okay. That's right. Talk about a wild scenario. Oh, my goodness, Brian. But there's lots more basketball to be played. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern, for free.